back to Free Media. I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Recently, the hosts over at Morning Joe appeared exasperated over Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s continued participation in the 2024 race. Let's tune in. I still don't. I. What's he doing in this race? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very leery of gaming out elections yeah. with a third contender. Yeah. Yeah, well, you ought to be. You legitimately ought to be. <laughs> uh, look, what is he doing in this race? He's running the race for himself. He's a very damaged individual. I've known him nearly all of his life. He's a very smart guy, and he's a nice guy, but he's a damaged guy. Uh, and the, the idea that he's running for president of the United States, I don't know how many ballots he's going to get on, John, but uh, I don't think enough really to do a whole lot of damage. There's almost nothing worse, Robbie, than the people who say, oh, I've known them forever, or we used to work together, and then go on to just talk absolute trash. <laughs> and that is so common in this industry yes. that people will just throw you under the bus at the first convenient opportunity. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, see a lot of that. Yeah, don't, uh, who are your friends in media? <laughs> Spoiler, you don't have any. Um, to use the word damaged uh, over and over again like that. I assume he's playing into that story about Robert F. Kenny Jr. having a actual like brain worm or something. Remember that, that he had to seek treatment for? Yeah, and I think um, There was he, a lot of jokes about that. I think he struggled with alcohol addiction, potentially. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and he's had uh, you know, his, right. his voice, um, that, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, the question of what's he doing in the race is just like easily answered. He's running for president because that is the right of like every American over the age of what, 35 and, you know, born in the USA and et cetera. Um, it's not actually just, there's nothing, there's no holy text that says only a Republican de a candidate and only a Democratic candidate may seek the office of the presidency. There is also a libertarian candidate running. There's a Green Party candidate running. Um, th this is how it goes. The, the, I just hate the entire philosophy of, of no, you got to vote, you know, red or blue, Republican or Democrat. Um, uh, you're throwing your vote away if not. And, you know, and third party challenges are, you know, evil or should be viewed suspiciously at best. Look, if RFK Jr. or anyone else is getting significant traction, then the major party candidates can should try to peel away their votes by talking to their issues. And RFK Jr. has arrived on the scene for having very different COVID views and, and recommending a different mitigation strategy than, uh, than happened under both Biden and Trump. And sorry if there are voters who prefer what he has to say about those things. That's on you guys. Both of you had a shot. Both of them were in charge at different points of the pandemic. And there's a lot of dissatisfaction with how both of them handled it. Exactly. If you're worried about a third party candidate being a spoiler, then you have to be better on the issues. It's really that simple. And I also reject this notion that we are supposed to outright uh, dismiss people who run as third party or independent candidates um, because of the potential for them to peel away votes from the two major party candidates. And I think the way that RFK Jr. has been attacked specifically is especially disgusting. I mean, we just talked about it. These are the same people who are going around talking about how we all need to have sympathy for Hunter Biden, who cashed in on his family name to sell out the United States to foreign interests repeatedly. Um, <laughs> but, but we're not supposed to have sympathy for RFK's past, which he has actually apologized for and spoken about pretty extensively. Yeah. Um, I've actually been on air with people who have blamed him for his ex-wife's suicide. Oh my God. I mean, just the most despicable attacks on him, all because he speaks to issues that no other candidates are willing to give voice to. And I think it actually scares some people. Well, these people, you know, uh, on, uh, on MSNBC, um, despise him because they think he's taking votes away from Joe Biden and he could cost Joe Biden the election. That, like, let's be honest, right. that's what their problem is. Now that belief of theirs is not even, I mean, I don't, if that is the case, I don't care. I think that's fine, but it's not even necessarily true. What we can see from polling so far is that RFK Jr. is taking from some by, he's winning some people who would vote for Biden otherwise, He's also winning a lot of people who would vote for Trump otherwise. It's not so clear which he's taking more from. Some polls, it looks more like he's taking from Trump. And then some make it 
look like he's taking from uh, Biden because he, he has a, you know, a, a, comes from a Democratic family, famous Democratic uh, president, et cetera. So he's just, some Democrats might have just affinity for the name and are voting for that. On the COVID stuff, it, it seems to be taking from the Trump campaign. And then also he's gonna get voters who would have voted for li the Libertarian Party or who just would not have voted at all or would have, you know, wrote in somebody. There are, there's a number of people in the country who do not just myopically fall in line between the two party system and we're just not gonna vote um, if uh, if they didn't have someone appealing on the ballot. So it's not, the bottom line is it's not clear at all that he is going to cost Biden the the, the win um, versus Trump. So that this fear is like entirely premature, but they'll say, they said it about Joe Jorgensen, who was our Libertarian Party candidate. They said it about Jill Stein for Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, and, and, and Nader and everyone going, every election, it's someone else's fault. Not, not your candidate, it's somebody else. <laughs> it's all, yeah, it's always somebody else's fault. Um, I think there's also a little bit of a personal dis, uh, uh, I guess, disgust for Kennedy as well. And this is so classic from the Morning Joe team because they did the exact same thing to Donald Trump, right? Mm -hmm. They had a long standing personal relationship with the guy and uh, would have him on their shows and talked about him and elevated him. And then when he espoused politics that they didn't like, they took it as a personal slight and tried to get away from the notion that they were responsible for the rise of a Trump or an RFK Jr. And so they flipped everything on its head and became their greatest critics. Yeah. Um, it, it's like they're trying to uh, avoid the perception that their whole persona, their whole uh, status in the media business is due to their high level relationships, which it is, yeah. it totally is. And the best thing for them, honestly, for their business model is going to be Trump becoming president right. again is the is the kind of funny thing about the, the amount of you know panic they have. Um, so we will continue to monitor that. More free media right after this.